Hi guys! Um, I've just finished a video where I flipped through this book uh, in a whisper style but I decided because it's kind of a really personal preference which you prefer soft spoken or whispered I thought I would go through it again because I didn't really look too much at things and it was my first time of looking through it so I thought I would make a um, separate video of the same thing and this book is Labyrinth Bestiary and as with the first video I've still not looked up whether it is Bestiary or Bestiary because originally I thought that it meant the beasts of the labyrinth but it seems more like an encyclopedia of the whole thing so somebody tell me I know they do these of other topics not just labyrinth but I should have really looked up how to pronounce it and I didn't but it's basically a definitive guide to the creatures of the goblin king's realm so that's what makes me think it's a bestiary but this is how thick the book is if I can pick it up so we're not going to be looking at the whole thing but like I said in my whispered video I am going to flip through it just to give you a general overview of what kind of book it is and in future videos I'm going to go through each section in a lot more detail and I'll probably alternate between whispered and soft spoken for that but I figured I won't go into too much depth today I will just show you maybe you'll have a look at the back Discover the world of Labyrinth in this guide to the wondrous creatures of the Goblin King's realm, featuring illustrations by acclaimed artist Iris Gompier. From Ludo to Sir Didymus to the Goblin King's legion of mysterious minions, Jim Henson's Labyrinth is packed with the wondrous beings and chaotic critters. For the first time, this deluxe volume brings their world to life through the stunning art of acclaimed illustrator Iris Combier. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, and she also did the dark crystal version of this book. Exploring the nature and behaviour of each creature through original illustrations and insightful text. Jim Henson's Labyrinth Bestiary covers not only the beloved 1986 movie, but also the wider world of the Goblin King's realm, including the hit comics and the original, original novelization. A gorgeous volume filled with incredible creature artwork. This is a must-have book for fans of Labyrinth. This is a must-have book or fans of Labyrinth. Which is it? Jim Henson and the fantasy genre. So let's open it up and just have a little look at the pages. So it's very heavy, very thick paper, almost like a card. It's matte. And the artist's style is kind of sketched, like when you draw concept art. It's very sketchy and very uh, watercolour effect. So the front and the back pages are the labyrinth, with the wasteland, the gates and the wall, the first part of the labyrinth going deeper and deeper into the castle at the centre of the labyrinth. And in my last video Binks was a real pain because he was laying all over the pages, he was biting, he's actually made a hole, <laughs> he does the bite test on absolutely everything and he, you can always tell where he's been because there's little holes, even my wallet which is like huge and thick it has bite holes in it, but I don't know when he got to it, but I'm 
hoping that he's now gone to sleep. He looks like a little slug over there. You can't quite see him, but... So, we're going to be steering. Forward by Toby Froud, which I believe is the, uh, Toby, you know, the baby in the movie. So you have the contents page, which contains an overview of the labyrinth, visitors to the labyrinth, adventurers of the labyrinth, protectors of the labyrinth, the goblin king and his court, the goblin city gates, and the labyrinth of yore, which I really um, skipped through, and I'll probably skip through again because these are things I have not yet learned about, having not read the comics and the book. So I think that would be really good to go through in the future and learn some more lore of the labyrinth, essentially. So, let's start. We have the foreword by Toby. And then we get straight to the world of the labyrinth. So we have the clock with the 13 hours. We have the, the rock face of the Goblin King which I did not really realise until I was a little bit older. So the camera pans out on one scene and you see his face come into view made up of different rock faces but they just all align perfectly. And I think there's things like that all the way through. Uh, places that you can see his face and things like that. It's really so well thought out. So we have an overview of the labyrinth the outside, the entryway, the labyrinth itself, and the oubliette. And there's Sarah walking down the path that seems to go on forever, which I feel would be really frustrating. I feel like I would try and climb the walls, maybe. underground, above ground, the fiery forest, the bog of eternal stench, the junkyard, the goblin city, and the castle. I don't know which... I feel like, you know what would be a really, really good idea and really cool? Um, if someone could make a theme park or an event type pop-up thing that is labyrinth based. And they could have the different areas just like this. They could pay actors to dress up as the various characters. They could really set the scenes. I think that would really be cool. I know it's like only my kind of generation that would enjoy that kind of thing, but I'm sure there's a few of the younger generation who love Labyrinth that do. I would do that if I won the lottery, if I became a millionaire. There's Toby on the crazy stairs. Sarah's bedroom. The beautiful ball gown that she wears in the masquerade ball scene. I love the song that plays during the ballroom scene. It's like one of my favourite songs. I always felt like it would be the song I would have if I was getting married as my first dance, but I don't know. Maybe I've grown out of that now, I'm not sure. <laughs> There's Toby. Oh, he looks like such a nightmare child. <laughs> I think he looks happier with the goblins, and they didn't do him any harm. I think she should have just left him and taken Jareth's offer. He offered her I, I never really understood what he truly offered her at the beginning I mean he kind of changed it at the end but he offered her the crystal ball but he said it can show you your dreams I mean don't get me wrong I, I feel like I can do that just by closing my eyes <laughs> but 
but maybe it just means anything you want in return for the baby. So, you know, as long as the baby is fed and watered, <laughs> why not? Then we have Merlin, her faithful little dog, little sheep dog. So, Adventurers of the Labyrinth. Let's read this. Despite its magic, or perhaps because of it, the labyrinth can be an intimidating place. Many of its residents toil in deliberate obscurity, keeping their heads down to avoid the wrath of the Goblin King. But a select handful are born great achieved greatness or had greatness unwittingly forced upon them. While each of the labyrinth's adventurers come to their roles in distinctly different ways, in the end they form friendships that change not only their own lives, but the very fabric of the labyrinth itself. Oh, so well written. I was saying in the last video too that I may be really missing the point, but there's chickens everywhere, and I don't know why. I don't actually remember chickens in the labyrinth, do you? So Ludo here is shouting to his rock friends to come and knock over the goblins that are shooting at them, because they have them surrounded. And you can see like a little goblin here poking his head out. They have Hoggle. This is Sarah's first encounter with anyone from the labyrinth. She meets him at the gates. And he is like the keeper of the keys to the door, essentially. And he lets her in. He is conflicted between doing the Goblin King's bidding, but also he wants to be good, I think, deep down. I really like him. I think he's cute. I know he doesn't look like he's designed to be cute, but I really think he's a cute character. Sir Didymus, one of my favourites, and of course Ambrosius, the bravest of them all. Well, not Ambrosius, but Sir Didymus. Guard their province with great tenacity and honour. Very well put. You can see the artwork is kind of, it's not super vivid and bright like some art books can be, and also a lot of art books are glossy pages so that the um, colours stand out, but this is really muted, really neutral kind of colours, very matte pages. They're almost not textured but like porous I wanna say. So you feel like they would like really absorb water. But I like that. I like that it's different. It would be again good on a coffee table. But I think if I were to put all my books on a coffee table well just all my books that are coffee table worthy. of the labyrinth. Fairies, with their lithe willowy bodies and smartly shimmering wings, the fairies of the labyrinth bear a sharp resemblance to those in Sarah's storybooks. But any similarity to these fairy tale creatures ends there. The fairies of the labyrinth are far from friendly and have no intention of granting wishes. Rather, they are prone to fits of violence, often biting the fingers of even the most well-intentioned stranger. Because of this behaviour, fairies are frequently seen as pests that require extermination. <laughs> Sounds a bit like Binks. So, the fairies. We have the worm, which 
I really need to get the board game of the run, but I have to play my Labyrinth game first. I have, and I feel like I need to apply a one-in-one-out rule because I have games everywhere now, and I very rarely play them anymore because I just don't have time. I play the same games over and over again because I get into like a habit of enjoying the same games. So at the moment I play Let's Summon Demons and a game called The Hunger, which is like a really long game, um, but I go through phases. The Helping Hands. Which way do you want to go? Yes, which way? I feel like I would be like, up, please, because nothing good is down. Surely she would know that. But she ends up in the oubliette, but Hoggle saves her, even though he's technically trying to take her back to the beginning of the labyrinth. It doesn't end up happening. The false alarm. The wise man and the hat. Please leave a contribution in the little box. the look of the brick keepers. They remind me of one of the ghosts from 13 Ghosts, the movie. I think it's the Juggernaut. It really freaks me out. Especially this one. Oh my god. That's the stuff of nightmares right there. So I always used to watch this film when I was um, a kid. So I grew up on it and David Bowie as Goblin King. Look, there's another chicken. <laughs> was my first crush when I was a little bit older. And when I grew up, I used to watch it as a comfort movie. So when you don't want something that you have to concentrate on, you just want something in the background. Or if I was ever ill, my uh, boyfriend at the time would always put it on and put me in bed and I would just watch it but I didn't associate it with being ill it just was comforting to me and then I watched The Lost Boys and that kind of took over that role for me <laughs> as comfort movie so I kind of evolved from fantasy well I suppose it is still fantasy it's kind of like classed as a horror genre but it's not really a horror is it So there we have Jareth, the Goblin King, or Sheriff, as I uh, thought they were saying when I was a kid, because I just thought he's in charge of the whole labyrinth, so he's Sheriff. <laughs> and I grew up thinking that until I was at least in my 20s, and then I got told, and I got laughed at. But that's kind of how it goes, you hear one thing and it just sticks with you and then you realise you've been saying it wrong for so long but it could be worse it's not something that I would really talk about with people <laughs> my kitchen sink tap just let out um, some water and I have no idea why I'm sorry if you heard that the masquerade ball so I was looking up something and I came across the fact that in America somewhere they do or used to do a thing called uh, Jareth's Masquerade or something like that and it was basically a masquerade ball in the theme of a labyrinth and I thought that was the coolest thing and I wished that I could have gone but we don't really have anything like the UK is kind of a little bit behind on the fantasy scene. We do have a lot of things now, a lot of conventions and a lot of D&D stuff, but when it comes to like vampires and uh, things like Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, things like that, they're still a little bit too niche. And I guess we're quite a small country too, whereas the US is so big, they have many different 
different places that things could take place but I would definitely go to that if I could a variety of goblins the goblin army oh, so this page opens up And you can basically see all of the goblins in one place. Again, it's colourful, but it's muted, so it's like a lot of earthy tones. Browns, reds, pinks, greens, and a lot of bright colour, because that is the essence of the labyrinth. It's, you know, goblins and uh, that kind of terrain as well. So, I think this book is really cool. I love that they do other ones too, I might have to get one, but I don't have any shelf space <laughs> for any more books. There's, there's these like the cannonball guys, they get shot out, I remember this. I don't remember the end of the film as much as I remember the beginning because you always start to watch it and then either fall asleep or become preoccupied. But these are called nipper sticks. How cute is that? It makes them sound a lot cuter than they actually are. Among the goblins' more worrisome weapons are the dreaded nipper sticks. Long, thin poles topped by aggressive toothed beings that bite everything they encounter. These fierce creatures cling to their sticks with pointed talons, leaving their jaws free to gnash on anything within reach. With sharp protruding fangs and a pole length reach, nipper sticks can be highly dangerous weapons. Because the creatures are prone to attacking their handlers, the goblins who carry them wear spiked helmets and metal shoulder plates to avoid undue injury. They look like a baby creature that's just been born, you know, when they're like all gross and slimy and can't open their eyes yet. But they just have to live like that. Home of the goblins. And of course, chickens. I must have completely um, not paid attention to the fact that there are chickens because I'm noticing it now, but I do not remember noticing it as a big theme in the film. And then this part is the bit that I did gloss over in the last video, and I'll probably do the same because I don't want to learn too much. I feel like I can save this for a more in-depth um, look. Maybe I'll read it with you and we can learn about it together because I think unless you've read the book or the comic book, um, you won't really know much of this. I certainly didn't recognise anything. I thought it looked really intriguing, really interesting. There's a worm that looks like a pirate worm. Look, feather fang. That looks so cool. Um, where is the worm? the worm, but he has his own dedicated page somewhere, I'm sure that I saw him. Tangle, a gentle walking rose bush. Ah, there he is. Bundergast the Invincible, aka, oh, how would you pronounce this? Sibyl? Sibyl? Hmm. Oh, it's a girl. <laughs> I guess she's like pink and I don't know. I thought it was a boy. I don't know why. I guess it's hard to tell being a worm and all. But yeah, we can go into that in more detail and more depth in the future. I think I'm going to go through some of my books that I've already done because it's been so long and I really just flipped through them basically and I can look into them a little bit more, maybe read some more things from them. I 
thinking maybe the Alice Madness Returns book and the Haunted Mansion book, possibly. I wish I had a book on the rides of the Disney parks. I know I have the maps and the posters, but I am just so Disney obsessed recently. I just can't wait to go back. Anyway, that was the book. I hope you enjoyed it. Or if not, I hope you enjoyed the whispered version, if that's your trigger that helps you sleep or gives you tingles. And I will see you all again very, very soon.